everybody. Welcome to part two of our two-part interview with Hometown Ghost Stories. And uh, these are great guys, and it's a lot of fun to talk to them. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, we are welcoming uh, three incredible guys who I've got to know pretty well. And they have a show called, it's called Hometown Ghost Stories. And I am welcoming to the show tonight Mr. Rob Copley, Dave Wilkins, and Jesse Wilkins. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Portal. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got an epic show ahead, but just remember, if any of you have experiences you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you. You can either email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com or head over to paranormalportal.net and uh, scroll down and find the button that says Interview Me, and that'll allow you to look at a calendar of possible times and dates and uh, find a date that works for you. Love to hear your stories, so definitely get in touch with me. Without further ado, let's get to part two. So another question from chat, blow me in Chicago, AKA Nancy says, who are your favorite TV investigators or least favorite? Ooh, okay. it's, a, it's a loaded question. It's I'll start question. with this. We're, so I'm just going to speak for all of us. We're not going to answer who our least favorite is because you never know who you're going to work with in this space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, who I've been coming around to like in terms of TV personalities a lot lately is Jack Osborne. Okay. Because I he has so much passion for it. Mm-hmm. He he might not be the best investigator out there. He's not bad. I'm not knocking him at all. But he might not be one of the more like well known in terms of like shows. And he always does these different things. But every time I see him doing something, he's very very passionate about it. So I I just love his passion for paranormal investigations. And he's one guy that I would love to do something with in the future. Yeah, I love how fast Rob jumped in there. I was like, "We're not going to answer who our least favorite is, guys. Shut up! You shut up right now." I made a list of my least favorite. I can't read this. <laughs> no, I like uh, I like Ghost Hunters. You know the OGs. They sure. they were the they were the ones that really you got to you got to respect it. Yeah. You got to respect that they were the ones that started this on the mainstream. Now they obviously weren't the first paranormal investigators, but they got the TV deal, the Gun a Billion seasons, and. I respect the fact that they do certain investigations and they aren't afraid to say like, Hey, listen, we got nothing. Yeah. We got nothing that I, yeah. and it's, it's, it's rare to see on different YouTube channels or different network shows that aren't afraid to say we got nothing tonight. Yeah. So I like that about it. And, um, I just like the guys that they're, they're likable. And my least favorite is Rob. It's <laughs> fair. <laughs> well, I was being honest. No, <laughs> just, um, <laughs> All right, we. I I gotta agree. I mean, I I don't think I I I try not to bash anyone, but I do I do kind of take issue with the shows that present slamming doors in every episode and things moving in every episode, and it's like, God, you know, that just I mean, that just defies all the odds that everywhere they go, there's chairs flying and there's doors slamming and there's you know glasses smashing and you know all of this crazy electrical stuff and. Could every location be that? And I don't think so, but I still enjoy watching them just for the sake of, you know, to see what people are doing. And, and I think, you know, sometimes even those sh- shows may catch some valid, you know, some valid anomaly. But I think, I think there's a great pressure in production aspect to, to create sensational shows. And I, I you know, I'm not blaming the teams, but I, I think that sometimes the editing can be uh, really misleading. Uh, I'll say that, but again, did you watch the show on um, Twenty Eight Days Haunted on Netflix? Yeah, I did. Did I you did. watch the episode with the God Helmet? The God Helmet? I think I saw all of them, but I'm trying to remember <laughs> what you're talking about. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but if you haven't looked into the episode with the guy with the God Helmet, you know, go <laughs> take take a look. I think worth your check. I think you know. Speaking of editing, just at the end of that show, where they they had that guy who had been dealing with you know that 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 negative spirit or whatever. And they got it out and stuff, and then they're, they're, I think they're in the graveyard later, and, and and the camera catches the guy just turning his head and and doing a side look, but they yeah. stopped it there until you know like stopped it in the evil look, <laughs> and froze that frame. It's like oh man, 
Okay. They couldn't decide. They couldn't decide what they what they wanted to do. Yeah, they're show. really trying to get me to just unload here, and I am <laughs> I am gonna. He was biting his tongue. I, hey, I didn't say it was good or bad. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. Yeah, I watched it too. And, and like I said, I enjoy the shows, but I, you know, I, I, I do think that there's some entertainment value in them. But I think that there are people out there like I've always respected Ghost Hunters too, because one thing I always appreciated about it, it was they were never running out screaming. You know, they weren't. Oh, you know, you're ghost hunting. What are you? What are you there for? If when a ghost shows up, you're like, you know, hitting the hitting the ditch. You know. Okay, that's me. That's what I do. <laughs> Dave, who's your favorite? Because we didn't hear from you. I don't watch ghost hunting shows, so I have no opinion one way or the other. I literally don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to throw that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's. I think your point is valid, though, Rob. I mean, not being in that space, I can't understand what their process is and all all that they have to deal with. And and you know, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than than my meager little ghost hunting attempts. So, Well, just to play devil's advocate really quickly on that, not mm-hmm. to defend anybody or, or or whatever, but we just told you about an episode that we never aired because we didn't get anything. Yeah. Right? So are they going places that we don't even know about and just not airing it? Sure. Until they go back and actually get something. Right. Right. You know, no. It could be possible. It's different when you are doing YouTube or you're or you have an actual network TV show where you you need to get the ratings and everything like that. So it's different. But Mr. Thomas, if we do an investigation, you don't show up in a God helmet. I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> Are they EB in those now? Where do I find one? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I think you make them out of Legos, if I remember correctly. You have to you have to order it from God himself. <laughs> you go you'll meet God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be counterproductive, but okay. Um, yes. Maggie M10 has a comment. How important is it to investigate as a team? Do you think there is more activity in a group? I think this is an interesting question because I really think it depends on the location. Mm -hmm. So there's locations that we get more activity as a group for sure. And then there was a particular room in the Oliver house that only... Basically, I was getting activity when I was investigating solo, and it's happened to Dave, it's happened to Jesse. So I, I really think it's it's location, and that location could be room specific as well. So, uh, so in the SK Pierce Mansion, mm-hmm. um, another one that we investigated, and this was as a group. So this is why this group was good. We were in the red room where. We brought our friend Crystal Quinn with us to do the investigation. And when we were in the red room, it would only respond to me, Jesse, or Dave, whenever spirit was in there. Mm-hmm. And then when we went to this other room, the spirit was responding almost exclusively to Crystal. Like, it did not really respond to us much at all. But when Crystal would speak, it would respond to her, which was really interesting. So... I think that's why it's important to go as a group to sure. have different people that the spirit can, that would want to communicate with. And I also think it's important to do stuff solo because sometimes maybe they just want to talk to one person. Right. Right. It's true and for, for the same reasons that Rob is saying also, I think it's important to do both, right? So you pick, you pick a room and a house, you want to investigate that room with a group of people. Number one, because more people, you have more eyes, more ears. We're going to catch more things. And you also want to do that same room with one person because if you're with a group of people, you can be distracted. You could miss stuff that you're not going to see when you're by yourself. You're able to focus more by yourself mm-hmm. and you might catch stuff that you wouldn't catch with a group of people. So I think it's important to do both. Don't pick one. Don't pick the other. Do both, but do them separately. And it's also important for efficiency reasons. So this is the other side of it. So if you have a group, then we can send two people upstairs with EMF detectors and go get a baseline reading. We can send two people downstairs. We can go get the footage that we need to get by all splitting up. Like, all right, I'm going to go tackle the attic. You tackle the basement. I'm going to tackle the middle floor. And we're going to all get the footage that we need. It's an efficiency thing as well. So it it does help to go in with a plan. That's a huge thing. First two investigations, we're like, all right, let's go figure this thing out. And then we realized like halfway through our investigations, like we need to go in with a game plan. Who's pairing up with who? Who's taking what room? And that if they, they're not getting anything, then let's switch it up. Let's go solo into certain rooms. And it's it's important to have, have a game plan, decide which equipment is going where, 
when are we doing this? How are we switching up this? And then it's also much different when you're filming it. So if you're going in and just doing an investigation, you get a lot more freedom to kind of do what you want. When you also are filming, it's it's a whole different monster because then it's also a, a big production. So it's um, activity wise, it's important to, to to switch things up and go with the group, and then efficiency wise as well. And knowing your location too. So if we went to the Conjuring House, we would keep that group really really small the next time we go three, four people max, and we wouldn't be able to do that thing where we go and investigate separate rooms at the same time because the noise contamination would be too out, would be too much. So we could only do one room at a time there. Where if you're in the Shanley Hotel, that's three different floors and it's a massive, massive building, you could investigate the third floor and the first floor or the third floor and the second floor and not overlap and hope that one of you actually captures something. Yeah, and then it scales up. If you do something bigger and bigger, like you do a prisoner, if you do something like Penhurst, I mean, shit, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, damn. I mean, damn. That's so sorry. I, I am bad at this. Mm, golly. If you go to Penhurst, <laughs> uh, you could bring 500 people and you could split them up because it, it's, it's a, it's so massive and there's so many buildings and everything like that. So you could do, you could actually realistically do the bigger thing. Bad thing logic, okay. group. No, Penhurst, you could do 500. Mm. I wouldn't do 500. That's a lot to. A lot of footage to go through. Yeah. yeah. It's too much. Too much. Absolutely. I'm going, next time we go to Penhurst, I'm going with no less than 500 investigators. So I think last time we were at Penhurst, there were 500. <laughs> sure. Maybe that's why they did it. Yeah. But they all crammed into one bill space together. I'm like, yeah, I got it. too much. It's too much. All right. Question from Chucky Danger in the chat. He says, do you think you've ever interacted with what might be described as an old god? Or well, what's an old god? So what's interesting about <laughs> do we got to get a soundboard for our show? <laughs> so what is an old god, right? So an old god is so before the Catholic the Catholic Church came in and rebranded everything, there were a whole bunch of different religions. They were kind of balkanized without even realizing they were, and they all had their own deities. And then when the Catholic Church really became the 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 main religion, they rebranded all of these foreign deities as demons. So a lot of people will, will, will name demons. They'll invoke these demons that were actually just gods of other religions. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question would be, what do you mean by old gods? Do you mean specific demons? Do you mean gods? How would you, I guess, elaborate on that question? I would, I would say. Yeah. I would make contact with demons though, if that's the question. I don't know. Possibly. Hopefully not. <laughs> yes, I mean we kinda want to, but at the same time you don't want to. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure. But we've we've definitely gotten communications via E V P and Spirit Box that are concerning. And not that I think anything demonic is at the Oliver House, for example, but we kept getting six 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 coming through the spirit box, if you remember. Yeah, it was very strange. Say yeah. that Rob got freaking, scratched. Yeah. Like a freaking scratch in the yeah. house. If there's that's like, why would there be something demonic. demonic there? It's just, I mean, you never know. But it's, have we gotten questionable evidence that makes you really nervous and makes you guess about stuff? Then possibly. And they, they do think that there is something demonic at the Conjuring House. Mm -hmm. And we got all sorts of strange activity in the basement there that could have been categorized as possibly demonic. So. Have I seen something? I'm like, damn, that was definitely demonic. We need to go to no. church and get cleansed, and, and I would say no. But I don't think we've, I don't think we've seen anything demonic. And from what I've read from exorcists who, who perform exorcisms regularly, and they see people who claim they need exorcisms regularly, they say that the odds of an actual demonic of actual demonic contact is like one in a million. It's so rare, sure. and despite the fact that they get calls all day long and they're, they're performing these exorcisms all day long. They say the, the chance of getting a legitimate demonic encounter is almost zero. So if we're talking about demons, um, we definitely haven't encountered any. I think most people have not encountered an, encountered an actual demon, I believe. But if you're talking about ancient gods, I feel like that number would be even lower. Yeah. I don't know that, that shadow figure at Emily's Bridge sure felt demonic when we were looking at it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, evidence of it being demonic is, uh, that's a, that's a leap. So I would, I would also say the, no. The piss in my pants was the evidence of it being demonic. <laughs> it's evidence of you being a bitch. Sorry. <laughs> 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 
Ladies and gentlemen, the language. That's going to have some editing to do tonight, baby. <laughs> oh, no. This is – we're unedited. This The language filters off, brothers. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> that that, that ponies left the stable. Yep. <laughs> Like within the first thirty five seconds, yeah, of the show. I know. I'm going to get that 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 red check mark at the end. You may not demonetize or you're demonetized mm-hmm. on this episode, but oh, we we ignore that. Oh, you should be here. <laughs> it asks us like, did you use any? The checklist is like, did you use any profanity? Did you talk about anything inappropriate? And we like we're like, well, yes, 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 yes. But nope, none of the above. Yeah. <laughs> but the checklist is just for the for the, the opening screen there. Yeah, yeah. So we're oh, fine. Please. We're fine. We're I'm not worried about it. It's not like that is a bill. <laughs> All right. So the next question, what uh, from Steph A. What is on your investigation bingo card top five? Mm, like in, in terms of going to? Yeah. What we want to visit? Yeah, your bucket Maybe. list. Dave? All right. I'm going to throw, Waver- throw Waverly Hills. I'll, I'll throw my five because I got it off the top of my head right now. But okay. Waverly Hills, Trans-Allegheny, mm-hmm. Sally House, Villisca, oh, Villisca, Pennhurst actual investigation, Pennhurst. Mm. Those are my five. Good. Uh, again, I could do five. All right. Um, I'll also, I'll piggyback off Villisca and Sally House. That's on our list. We've got to do those two. We've got to do them in one shot too, because that's, that's the play. Uh, I would love to go to the Idaho State Penitentiary. I think that would be a cool one to go to. I could make that one. <laughs> yeah. I know you could. <laughs> but, uh, I would like to go to St. Augustine Lighthouse would be a really cool one. And I would love to go see the Aztec pyramids down in Mexico City. Mm. Nice. Uh, any Hanta location in Japan for me yeah. to start? I love how Rob starts out with an entire country. <laughs> well, <laughs> Japan, well, Japanese. Australia, the Mars, <laughs> the moon. <laughs> Someone's got to land there at some point, right? You know, but no. <laughs> but just Japanese spirit, spirit culture is very like fascinating to me. So if we could get into any. We've covered a few. If we could get to any of those locations that we covered, there's a bridge there that is really, really cool that I would like to get to. Um, Chillingham Castle. I would love to go to Chillingham Good Castle. Good one. And investigate there. The The Sally House is my number one. Sally House is my number one. Like, I need, we need to do. that. That is one we will do. Yeah. Um, and probably within a year or so, I feel like we're going to get to the Sally House. Um, I want to go back and investigate the old Bridgewater House. My, my grandparents' old house, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Now that there's new owners there, it's been completely renovated. I know that's not a super exciting one for other people, but just the amount of history the three of us have with that place, mm-hmm. that would able, be cool. to be able to go back there would be really nostalgic. Cool us, yeah. And, because, uh, because you guys said Sally House and the list, I'm going to amend that. I'm throwing Alcatraz on the list and Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say Brushy as well. Um, Brushy will be fun. Yeah, ah, that sounds like a, a twisted place for sure. And and I'm back Absolutely. To, yeah, those old prisons there, just, <laughs> they're packed full of pain and, and uh, agony. So I'm sure there, there's lots of fun over there. Yeah, we need to do a prison. We haven't investigated a prison yet. I haven't been mm. around. For when we weren't arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't investigate in a few places in Plymouth before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Bridgewater. <laughs> Those jails, not haunted. Not haunted. <laughs> I'm just Do I hear about Rob getting arrested almost naked? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We're already cussing. Let's go. It's after dark. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It wasn't almost naked. It was in a Batman onesie, first of all. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I almost got arrested in. I got a dancing, <laughs> dancing. Yeah, lo- I got a dancing lobster in my head. Now I got Robin in Batman. Yep. Like you showed up in a weird time of that street. <laughs> <I knows. laughs> <laughs> you You're polluting my mental process. I'm trying to catch up with the chat there, just flying in here. So I know there's a, a, a trying to find capital letters. Makes it easier. Um, okay, Rob. 
This is yes. from Blow Me in Chicago, a.k.a. Nancy. Rob, did growing up in a haunted house make you, well, I guess we kind of covered this, more sensitive to the paranormal? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think it has. I think I've come more in tune with it mm-hmm. the more investigations we've done. And having having that house as almost a baseline yeah, it has been very helpful for me. So I, I would say yes, for sure. Okay. Rachel gets it right, comes in with a question. Do you find that you have more paranormal events happening when you do investigations during a full moon? Do you think the solar flares, once they encompass Earth, can influence or increase ghost activity? I actually heard that the new moon is the most oh. likely to see a haunting. And I don't know the reasoning behind it, but that's what I read. Mm-hmm. And that it's, for whatever reason, it's the new moon, not the full moon. Uh, but I don't, I, I will admit that I think that we failed to pay attention to what the moon looks like on any of our investigations, which to be fair is something we probably should note because I think it'll be interesting to collect that mm-hmm. data and look at it in retrospect. You look at, you know, a hundred locations that you, that you investigate. And if the moon's in a certain place for all the ones that you're getting, um, evidence for, I think that would be interesting to look at collectively. So good question. It's definitely a thing. It's gotta be right. Yeah. With the full moon, whether or not it's paranormal investigation, I could say just as someone who works in the city and deals with crazy people all day (laughs) outside of the paranormal universe, like people, act insane when the moon is full it's it's a real thing and i don't i haven't looked into too much of the science behind it but it's got to be a thing but i don't know if you got to this question or if you wanted to but i've scrolled up a bunch and i found jared daniels who says have you guys done that blindfold and earplug session how do you feel about that authentic i haven't tried it yes if method. it's okay with you estes yep. yeah right yeah the estes method so we've we've dabbled with the estes method my issue with the Estes method is when I watch the Estes method in different investigations, I'm always like, is it fake? You know what I mean? Because you don't hear what they're hearing. Right. So what I want to try to do is modify the Estes method where we have two outputs, one that's going into the noise canceling headphones and one that's going into a feed where we can actually play what's being played on the spirit box. So for those unfamiliar with the Estes method, basically you wear a blindfold, and the reason for the blindfold is so that you can't read lips of questions that are being asked to you and you wear the uh, noise canceling headphones and you're plugged into a spirit box. So all you can hear is the white noise or the spirit box going on and you're just relaying things that you're hearing through the device and somebody else in the room it will be asking the spirits questions and then without the person with the headphones on knowing what you're asking, they will sometimes answer the questions either intelligently or non. And so sometimes when this method works, you get some of the most chilling responses because when you have somebody that's dialed in, they, they're they blindfolded and all they can hear is that spirit box and they're just repeating whatever words they can make out out of it. Yeah. When those answers that they're giving you answer your questions intelligently, it is it is absolutely chilling. And the, the most shocking and the most successful time that we had at this was at the... um. At Shanley Hotel. And it was me and Rob. It was late. And we're like, all right, let's just go back to, what was her name? Was it Rose or Rosie? I forget. It was the little little girl's girl's bedroom. She had drowned on the well outside the house. And it was her bedroom. And we got some of the most, some of the most absolutely chilling um, communications. And it was, it was like we're having a conversation. There was a, a few things that happened during that where at one point it sounded like someone was straight up just screaming in my ears. And I had to take the headphones off. I'm like, I've never, never had that happen before in the spirit box. And then the other thing that I we, I had happen was I, with the blindfold on, I saw this weird like light anomaly moving back and forth. And I've never had that. Basically, I'm sitting here with my eyes closed and I'm seeing like a light moving back and forth. And it was the strangest thing that I've ever experienced. I've never had an happen before or again since. So it was it was pretty cool. So we have had success with this. My, my only issue with it is... You really have to trust the people that you're watching that is it isn't faked because this is always the lens that we're looking at things through is is it authentic and is, is this going to come off authentic to skeptical viewers? So it's tricky, but when you do have success with it, success with it, it is absolutely terrifying. Our Shanley one when we were doing it, I had this giant pit in my stomach and like goosebumps because it was like oh, like just just the answers I was getting as I asked Jesse the questions. And I knew he couldn't hear me. It was just like, 
a gut punch almost every time and just actually really scary. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was creepier than we ever thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. You see, that's the thing for me. I, I would I would I'm not sure I'd be comfortable being like blindfolded and you know and and not able to hear anything because I don't know those play when you're in a haunted location. You're already on, you know, on, on needles and pins anyway, just because you're dealing with whatever the hell it is we don't know and you don't know what its intentions are. Well, mm-hmm. not, you know, why don't I completely disable myself? <laughs> yeah. Well, we were sort of in this. The other time that we got something really cool that was very different was we ran an experiment at the Conjuring House. And this is one of the ones that the team had put us on. They had us hooked up this giant spirit box, like white noise generator thing. It was like the size of like a microwave i've never seen one so big must have been a very old model but either way they had this set up for um my our little brother's wife Catherine. so uh andrew comes along actually in most of our investigations our chat knows him as a cat mix slugs talented guy very funny but he was there and Catherine was there as well so they had Catherine hooked up to this the estes method Mm -hmm. and she's blindfolded and has the the um and has the uh headphones on and everything and she seemed to be receiving directions. And Andrew had a camera, the night vision. We're in the basement. All the lights are off of the conjuring house. And it seemed to be giving him directions. And it says like, and so Catherine is just reading out directions of forward, forward, go. And so Andrew's like, I'll just start following these directions. So he starts walking forward. And then she says, turn. And he turns down the hallway right at the right time. And then she, she's like, forward, forward. So she has no idea that she's directing somebody because wow. she has no idea because she's blindfolded. So she has no idea that Andrew's moving and where there's like 10 people down there. So everyone's like blown away. Like what is going on here? And it says forward, forward. So he keeps moving forward. And then she says, stop. And he's at just about at the end of the hallway now. And at the end of the hallway, it said, stop. And then Andrew just stops. And then she just says, hello or something like that. And it was almost like the ghost was leading somebody down the hallway and around the corner and then it had them stop right where that ghost was, and then it said hi to him. And it was like, <laughs> we're all like, what did we just witness? And we, yeah, we looted the video of it. it. It was like, I have goosebumps now thinking about it. It was just so strange. And just for her to keep giving to mind you, she's blindfolded. She has no idea that Andrew's actually walking around and following whatever direction she's reading out. It was such a chilling um like interaction that we had with that. So the SC's method, when it works, it works. And when it doesn't, it feels like a goofy waste of time. But it's... uh. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Jaron Daniels' question, do you think most uh, of the hauntings are residual? Yes. Okay. I think most hauntings are residual. Like, if I would put a number on it, I'd say probably 95% of them seem like residual hauntings. I think intelligent hauntings are very rare. I think most of them, if they exist at all, are just residual leftover energy that was absorbed into whatever natural... Uh, material in the area and whether it's imprints or or whatnot i think that, that is the majority of the hauntings if not all of them i think that yeah. the most compelling evidence is for residual hauntings from leftover energy there's a really interesting theory that i read about when people walk into a haunted location they'll say that they get a feeling that they can't explain right like they feel sad for some reason or they feel angry for some reason they can't explain it and the theory behind it is if somebody dies violently in an area, whatever emotion they were feeling at that time is attached to that energy that leaves their body when they die. So that energy that that resides there, if you walk through it, you could feel that emotion that that person felt when they died, which is lingering and that energy that was left over. I think that's a fascinating theory. I don't know what kind of science backs it or whatnot, but I know that it is. it has been studied and it is a theory and I think it's probably one of the best. I agree. I, th- I think not necessarily that most or 95 or, or percent of hauntings are residual. I just think that residual is the most common that you're going to experience. Mm-hmm. I think an intelligent haunt or poltergeist activity or any other kind of ghostly activity that you experience, I think it takes a lot more energy to manifest. So where where it's getting that energy from, I think it's more rare to find those things. So it's not necessarily like you can't you obviously can't put a number on it. Right. So we can't say that there's definitely 25 ghosts in here. There are 25 hauntings in here. The 23 of them are residual. And then the other two ghosts, they show up when they feel like it. It's, you can't do that. It's not the way this stuff works. But 
I just think so, it's my least favorite thing that places do. Yeah, when they when they're, they're like, there's the definitely place. 42 ghosts here. It's like, okay, bro. <laughs> how how do you know there's 42 ghosts? It, it drives me insane. <laughs> I agree. I agree that people people uh, like to insert themselves. I think in a lot of a lot of things, and that would be one of them. It's like, how can you know? Or, in, you know, I think one of my biggest pet peeves when when I've watched investigations or even participated in them, not that I've experienced a whole lot personally, but when, when people go into a, a location with a preconceived notion of what they're dealing with, it's like, well, old man Whipple died here. So let's, you know, and, and you spend the whole investigation going, old man Whipple, are you here? Are you here? What if it's not old man Whipple? You know, what if it's, you know, Pete the plumber who, you know, took a took a header going down the stairs? You don't know, and 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 so Here's, go ahead. That's that's an important point. It's it's a great point because if you go in addressing the wrong ghost, two things could happen. Number one is you go into a haunted location and you assume that old man Whipple is haunting this location, right? Mm-hmm. So you go there addressing old man Whipple the whole time, and you get no responses. All right, might be because you weren't talking to old man Whipple the whole time. So it doesn't mean the location is haunted. Hell, if somebody comes in to to my house or if I run into somebody in the street and they're like, Hey Derek, how are you? I might not talk to that person at all. Cause I'm like, this person thinks I'm Derek and I'm not Derek. My name's Jesse. <laughs> right. So you either don't talk to that person or you're quick with them. You're like, Oh yeah, wrong guy. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Right. So, so you get it again. It goes back to speaking to spirits. Like you would speak to people. Right. 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 Figure out who you're talking to first. <laughs> don't actually assume. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm actually shocked Dave hasn't left because you brought up Pete the plumber and Dave notoriously hates plumbers. <laughs> What's going on here, Dave? <laughs> I, I, that is a, that's an inside joke. Rob loves to uh, throw inside jokes around. <laughs> like everyone knows what's going on. It's completely thinks, different shows. Thinks it's super funny. <laughs> no one else needs to know. We just know that you hate plumbers. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just, it, it goes back to Mario and Luigi. I used to get really angry at that video game, so it kind of lingers. I was I was just wondering if it had to do with people that don't wear belts. <laughs> uh, he he was hoping that he could eat a mushroom and grow taller, and he never could. So that's yeah. He ate mushrooms well and played. ended up uh, wandering around the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Got arrested. People thought it was a residual haunting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God! Talking to spirits everywhere. Eric Fry comes in. Ever want to visit Mount Shasta? Oh, uh, the uh, the missing island of the the Lemurians. Ooh, okay, I think that's so. If, if I'm thinking of the same, you uh, might be. I hope so, because otherwise, that's a really weird reference. Well, I think it, I think this is in California, and I'm pretty sure that this is interesting. There's there's UFO sightings, right? Mm. But also, they they believe that there was this island. I'm trying to think, and it disappeared, and it was called like the island of the Lemurians or something like that, oh. and they uh. That rings a bell. It sunk and disappeared. And apparently that this mountain is haunted by these these people. If I'm fucking wrong, like I'm really <laughs> wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is that this is what this is. I think it's in California. We haven't looked into it, but I've wanted to because it's interesting. But I don't know how to incorporate it into like a ghost story, right? Because you know what's you know what's alarming is a quick Google search says Mount Shasta is a potentially active volcano. Hmm. Like I think you need someone to figure that out. <laughs> Right, potentially active volcano is a very dangerous situation. There's got to be right. somebody. John, John LaBella says I'm correct. Thank you, John. Hell yeah, for the clarification. <laughs> now, now we need to find out if it's actually active. John LaBella, go to that volcano and figure that out for us. Yes. Jump inside. Let us know if it erupts. <laughs> <laughs> if you come back, we know it's not active. It's, it's safe. Yes, I have heard of it. I do want to cover it. We should do it for side content. It'd be a great dark mystery episode. Nice. This, maybe I will. All right, uh, Misfire Jack, we're going to probably have to just take a question or two more and then uh, roll on to the special segment here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Misfire Jack comes in. How do you protect your mental health from the spirits and experiences you go through? We, we don't. Have you watched our show? <laughs> <laughs> For David, it's all completely out of our mind. Strictly whiskey-based. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh damn! Nice. Yeah, it's, it's ahead of me. 
It is a great question, though. I don't do anything in particular, but what I can tell you is after an investigation, and I think I can speak freely for all of us on this, we are all physically and mentally drained by the end of an investigation. And hundred percent. I need, I need a day to re to recover usually after an investigation. Sure. Uh, not that we always have a day to recover because of the schedule we're on, but yeah, it's, it's more about the recovery for me than the other way. And maybe that's not good, but we haven't had issues that we know of yet. Knock on every piece of wood I can find. But uh, yeah, it's just more about getting over that drainage for me. You know, it was good what we did last time when we went to Austin, because we did the with the full invest, the investigations day one, day two, and then we booked a late flight for day three. And we just mm -hmm. chilled out that day. We went, we got a late lunch. We slipped around on scooters. We kind of just, we checked our bags, checked out of the hotel and just kind of hung out and, and chilled out. And I thought that was, at first I was like, why are we flying out so late? We're not going to get home till late, but it was nice to just hang out in the city and kind of just unwind. Yeah. There's nothing worse than when you go on a trip and you have to like panic, wake up early, check out a hotel and get straight to the airport. It was, it was actually kind of nice to just kind of chill for the day. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I got a quick question then. Uh, what, what process do you guys have or do you have a process to protect yourselves before entering an investigation? This is something that I think me and Dave, we have wives that are worried. Rob has no family, so he's got nothing to worry about. <laughs> but my wife is very, you know, she's religious. Mm -hmm. And um, so that I think it, and if we start going to like deeper, darker places, it's probably going to have to, have to be something that for our marriage sakes, it's just probably a good idea that we, we do some sort of um, cleansing or, or religious take take right. some steps to to make sure that we don't bring something home because while me and Dave are psychopaths and we would love to bring something home because we can document it and make some really cool hometown ghost stories episodes for it and talk about it on the next episode of Paranormal Portal. There you go. The wives would not be happy with us. And this would lead to right. Troubles. So we've we've never done anything beforehand, like protective, but I've come home where my wife is not comfortable. She didn't like me going to the conjuring house. She was not okay with that. She didn't like what went down in San Antonio. She was not cool with that. Um, that's another story. But we came when when I come back, she had she had she has she keeps sage. Yeah, she's into that stuff, and she'll like sage the house and 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 cleanse the house of whatever she thinks might be just as as a preventative measure from what I might bring back to these mm -hmm. places, but not so much before I go to them, which might be something to look into. Might At least be. give her if nothing I else, peace of mind. Again, we're doing this for investigative purposes and we're doing this for research. So I would I would worry about if I were to do something beforehand, am I not going to experience the paranormal things that I want to experience at a haunted location? So that's kind of like the, I really want to see some cool stuff side of me when I go into a place. But yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say that my wife had literally called in a uh, priest to come in and do a full-blown exorcism on my house before because that's happened as well. Okay. So- Oh. Yeah, there 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 are steps being taken, but um, but not as uh, not as thorough as we could be, I suppose. But okay. I just take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Rob just gets a nap. Good deal, good deal. Well, gentlemen, I want to introduce you with my pet concept here. And this, you guys are actually the guinea pigs for this. I've never done this before on the show. I I, I will admit, I think I, I I've kind of taken the idea from Wes Grimmer a little bit, but. But, you know, I think it's it's good fun, and, and uh, I'm going to give you guys a paranormal portal quiz, and you all have papers and uh, pen handy, and you all, all three of you, will be competing for a paranormal portal t-shirt. So, how do you feel about that? I'm ready. I hope you got an extra large, since I'm going to win. <laughs> I got whatever size you need, brother. Um, we, uh, just, just so you know, some of these questions have to do with cryptids, some with UFOs, but also some ghost ones. And there's some, I'm sure with the, most of the ghost ones, there'll be ringers for you guys because you're clearly very well versed in the, in the ideas and, and concepts behind all of this. But some of them are going to be maybe out of your wheelhouse. So I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Cause if we get a tie, I got to buy three shirts. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Okay. What if we tie? If we tie with at all at zero, does that still count as a tie? Jeez, <laughs> Rook Rob, oh, I, we're on the same page. What have we? <laughs> we got an umbilical cord between you two, or what is that? <laughs> That's crazy. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first ever Paranormal Portal quiz featuring hometown ghost stories competing for the title. Here we go. <laughs> I don't have a graphic for this. <laughs> and this is music. This music. Yep, we just got music. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are now audience to the first ever Paranormal Portal Quiz, where I ask these three gentlemen some paranormal questions. The top score wins a Paranormal Portal shirt. So I'm going to do my best to keep score. Um, we'll just do one point per question. Uh, some of them have multiple points, so maybe we'll do one point for as many as you can come up with. But question number one, right to cryptozoology here, folks. So, all right. On what year was the Patterson-Gimlin film recorded? Take your best guess if you don't know. All right, when you have your answer, hold them up to the screen. There's no shot. Any of us get this coming. Would you say 1479? 19, sorry, one nine. nine. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, 1979, <laughs> 1964, 1972. It was actually 19, 1967. So Ooh. I think, Rob, you got that one, right? Is that I don't it? think he did. I think he I was the, wrong, just like the other two did. <laughs> Closest without going over. All right, so we'll go with zero points for question number one, because you're right. Wow. So again, it's not a correct answer, but you were closest, Rob. It was That's right, because I'm the best. October 20th, 1967. All right, number two. Where was the Patterson Gimlin film recorded? Do you know the location? I should have Jeopardy music on. All right, what do you got? In the woods. Gimlin. Uh, what does it say? Germany? Germany. It was actually Bluff Creek, California. I was the closest. <laughs> was it in the woods, though? It was in the woods. You're right. You're right. You're right, Rob. That would that would be a, a don't set that precedent. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Outside, yeah. You weren't specific. You didn't say that it had to be. Uh, uh, That's true. A, uh... That's true. I should probably word these more carefully. So, number three, what year did the alleged Roswell UFO crash occur? You're making us look really bad. No, no yeah, right. not right. I mean, you're all some ghost questions. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. The next one's a UFO one, too. Sorry, guys. 1942, 1972. And what is yours, Jesse? It's blurry. Uh, it's the correct answer. What is that? <laughs> I could. Uh, 19, I went 1988. 1988. Okay. It was actually 1947. All right. Oh, Rob. Nice. Yeah. So I, I knew it was the 40s. I couldn't remember exactly. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Actually, Rob, yeah. you're pretty close. Shut up, Rob. All right, number number four. Now, this is just a name, and, and maybe you've heard of this. This is another UFO question. This UK forest was the location for an incredible UFO event where U.S. service members allegedly came into contact with a UFO. Name the forest. It was right by a military base. Anything, Jesse? Um, nope, not Canic Chase. Good guess, though. It's the only forest I know in the UK. What is Dave? What is your say, Dave? Rendlesham. That is correct. Oh, I wrote the same one down. Rendlesham, two points, Dave. There's just no fucking away. There's no way. <laughs> well, unless Jesse knows shorthand, I think he did. Because um, it was really quick after Dave put his up. All right, it's Rendlesham. All right, number five. Name three famous lake monsters. Three? Just three. I'll give you one point for each one you get right. If you come up with some weird ones, i got to pull up the Wikipedia page because there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> Those are kind of just three variations the same one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Lake monster. Lake monster. That's weird. Yeah, I like, you know, those plesiosaurs that they think are everywhere. Where's these will come? Oh, now he's. What does that say? I mean, I can never read yours, Dave. 
I'm sorry. It says Loch Ness and then the Lake Placid Gator. Okay. That's and Rob a- movie. And Rob's mom. <laughs> wow. I'll, I'll give you two points on that, Dave. Uh, <laughs> yes. I went Loch Ness, Giant Squid, and Kraken, but I'm pretty sure two of those are in the ocean. Kraken mm-hmm. in the ocean, you I, idiot. Actually, I just went with Nessie and Dave, and I didn't have a good, <laughs> funny third one. <laughs> I'll give you two, Jesse, because actually there is a Giant Squid one. Hell yeah. Uh, um, or it's actually a giant octopus, but either way. Um, all right. Well, that'd be, yeah, okay. Rob, you got a point. Dave's at three, and Jesse's at three. You got the brothers tying so far. All right. Name the two major types of hauntings. We kind of covered it in our discussion, but that's okay. All right. What are, residual intelligent, residual intelligent. That's two. Well, at one point, yeah, because it's named two. I'll give you one for each. Give you a bonus. It's when Dave doesn't leave. <laughs> fact. He, that is a fact. He haunts my nightmares. <laughs> In my dreams. <laughs> All right. Number seven. This one will be an easy one. This type of spirit is very active, although its activity is usually very short-lived. Its name means noisy ghost. Yes, gentlemen, all of you are correct. Why we're getting down to the wire here. Thank God we know our stuff. Damn, I know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sweating bullets when we were getting to some of those, although yeah, we could yeah. still get some stuff. From them. <laughs> Number eight. This 120 year old famous doll depicts a little boy in uniform who bears a powerful curse, including severe misfortune for those who take his photo without permission. Name the doll. There you go. Yep. That says Robert. Jesus Christ, my handbread is not good. Yep, you mm-hmm. all three are. You could have led with these, so we at least felt a little smart when you started. <laughs> <with this. laughs> I know, I know. But you're, you're ending strong. Uh, okay, all right, I respect it. All right, I actually scribbled out one of the questions and then put in a, another ghost one um, before the show, just so you know. Cause, well, thank you. Probably the doll is 120 years old now. Yeah, he's on. That's crazy. I got mean, the doll list. The story's not though, right? Um, no, I don't think. I think it just started. Out no, it started. Came out when he was the kid was just but, obsessed and yeah. speaking to him like he's a right a person, um, mm-hmm. which was concerning to everybody. All right, here's a weird one. Another cryptid one. <laughs> Number nine, and this one's lesser known, but maybe you guys have heard of it. This frog-like creature reportedly stands approximately four feet tall, and terrorized residents of the Ohio town, which is. Part of its namesake. Can you name this cryptid? I wish I wore the frog onesie now. I know. I'm not getting up to it. <laughs> we have a whole frog thing on our show. I'll give you a hint. It starts with the word love. Oh, yes. Don't copy me, you piece of shit. I see you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't get it. Yeah, I got nothing to that. I wrote okay. that. Um, I just hope we all have fun. <laughs> are you having fun yeah good i'm having a great time yeah. absolutely good so it's the loveland frog that is correct dave you got that one number 10 this new hampshire couple experienced what they claim as an abduction an et abduction on september 19th or 20th 1961 and were instrumental in putting et abduction in the american awareness who were these two people I know this story so well, and why can't I think of their names? I mean, I know this story. I, I yes. think saying it so well is... <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the last name. I don't, I don't remember the first names. So that, is correct. that is correct. Oh, no, I'll take it. Thank you. I didn't see her, Jesse. Was this the same? Yes, that is correct. And Dave... Was it the Hills? It was, yeah. <laughs> no, you're too late with that. You liar. liar. I'm joking. I'm joking. I have no clue. All right. Well, okay. That was my last question. So let's say we've got Rob with two, four, five. We got Dave with three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, bullshit. I don't Dave care about the frog question. Jesse has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have oh, a tie. okay. tiebreaker. Oh. I guess I guess I would have oh, a, 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 a t shirt. Okay, here's here's uh here's your Jesse, you can have the sleeves if I'll get if, the I, rest. if I win. Uh huh. Can I request that the T-shirt is light, lightly worn? 
I just want some of that Brent Musk, you know? Would you like it to smell like me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll let you do pay- rock, paper, scissors for the win. Can you guys do it? Can you coordinate yeah. that? Yeah. Can, can we do it in time? We ready? Go ahead. Uh, All right. Three, two, one. Rock, paper. Oh. Well, fuck it. I, was, I didn't oh, telegraph. Yeah. God, this right. is embarrassing. <laughs> I feel like I win. <laughs> Let's try it again. Scissors, scissors beats nothing. All right, I'll, I'll call it out. You guys ready? All right. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Brent, you yeah. got to have some sort of paranormal question that you can conjure in your head and throw at us to see who gets it right. Hey, Eddie, it's just one of you write. Rob, shut up. What you're doing on a paper. Nobody wants to hear up. from the loser. Dude. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we, we got these papers in front of us. Just write down rock, paper, or scissors. There you that's go. Be a timing idea. thing. All right. Yeah. Uh, whenever you're ready, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Hold it up. Paper. Hell yeah. Ah. Missed. <laughs> All right. Dave. Bold's going with paper after I threw the scissors out there all willy-nilly. I know. Dave, you are the winner. That is. No, Jess is the winner. What did you uh, say? I think I said paper and he put I, Oh, I got it backwards. Sorry. I had this right. theory that <laughs> rock should all also right. beat paper. In On what planet would paper beat a rock? All right. Well, I don't know. It wraps around the rock, I think, is the deal. I think good is <laughs> Congratulations, Rock. Jesse Wilkins, you are the, the champion of the Paranormal Portal Quiz. That was not so I need to prepare a speech. Yeah. Breeze. It says, um, 1979, 1979 we all Germany. 1972. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I hope that was kind of fun. I don't know. It's, that was a great take. I loved it. Yeah. Well, Thank cool. God Dave didn't win because I'm assuming you don't have child sizes. <laughs> I don't think we have onesies. <laughs> oh, you should. No, I'm we kidding. should have onesies. <laughs> Dave, you're great. You guys are awesome. I I just had a blast having you guys on here as always. Um, it's it's just incredible to sit back and talk with you guys. And thanks for making time for this tonight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Any any time you want us on, we will uh, come on. Excellent. Dream come true, my friend. What are you doing? What are you guys doing tomorrow? <laughs> I'm ready. Absolutely, man. Just I'm, paranormal. I'm studying my cryptids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Boy, was your chat let down by having us on that contest early on in that contest. So, well, you guys did right. great. You did one. Seven, seven out of what? Ten? Seven out of ten. Yeah, it was yeah. seven out of ten. You guys, you know, there's three between you and you and Jesse and, 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 and Rob, you know, you've got some homework to do. <laughs> Rob, I think he's got the, uh, the child-sized brain. Ooh, ooh, child-sized ooh. t-shirt, he's got the child-sized brain. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> there it is. All right. Um, gentlemen, could I'm you here all? Could you wait? <laughs> could you take a couple minutes letting people know how to stay in touch with what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um you can get us on any of the podcast platforms. You can go to Hometown Ghost Stories on YouTube. If you want to interact with us, we have our own Discord, much like Brent has the Paranormal Portal one. If you're looking to interact with other people that talk about ghosts, you can do it there. But yeah, mostly watch us on YouTube every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are live with our main episode. You can come in. You can hang out just like just like you're doing now. What you're doing now, you could do Tuesday nights and talk about ghosts with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you uh, go back to the archives, you will find Brent Thomas here on Several episodes of Hometown Ghost Stories. He's our absolute favorite guest that we've ever had on the show. He's and our favorite person right in here. the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So well, not only does he fill in when uh, one of us is absent, but, um, you know, he's better than Rob. So. <laughs> well, how you do go on. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, no, it's been a blast, guys. And thanks again. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I will look into the New Orleans thing and see if that's a possibility. Just uh it will be that yeah. much fun. Throw me some we'll things. Cool. Yeah, if you would. And uh, feel free to pay for anything for me if you want. That's cool, too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, sign up for our Patreon. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe we can afford to oh. fly Brent Thomas. To- <laughs> 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 it's the Brent Thomas Initiative. There you go. Yep. I'm going to bring her a tear. No, that'd be a little tear for you. Um, but yeah, gentlemen, it's been a blast. And uh, I, I, I had always a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't checked out their show, please check it out. You're you're going to love it uh, and spread the news about Hometown Ghost Stories as well as the Paranormal Portal. We are definitely brothers in arms, and uh, it's just been a an incredible relationship and friendship 
to have with these guys. And, and I, you know, if you don't love them, then there's definitely something wrong with you. All right. I would agree. <laughs> it's always good. And I'm, I'm honestly always impressed with your chat. Like these, these, they're always dropping great questions and make a funny joke, something like that. Reminds me very much both our own, uh, our own group of people there. So oh. there are a few guys sprinkled in there that are also in ours, but absolutely legendary group of people you've assembled here, Brent. We're impressed. I wish I could take credit for it. They just all found me and kind of made it home. So I'm just lucky. Get out! All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for us today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And thank you again so much for all your love and support. And uh, remember, if you want to follow the Paranormal Portal, probably the easiest way is to head over to paranormalportal.net. And that's the homepage for the Paranormal Portal. And you'll find links to all of our different social media and uh, sites and information about the shows, including our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash paranormal portal. Or just look for Paranormal Portal on, on Google or whatever search engine and you'll find links to our social media such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, Twitter. So we're kind of all over the place and uh, we're spreading as as well as we can. But anyway, thank you so much for the love and support. You all take care and remember, we love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other, help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. Until next time.